Hello, this is Jack Cummings, pastor of Doorway of Hope in Hamlin, West Virginia. Thank you for joining me for coming out. Let us reason 15 minutes with Pastor Jack. And we will be continuing our study on the book of Revelation. This is lesson 23, Revelation 6, verses 7 and 8, The Pale Horse and Its Rider. And as we get into this study, uh, I thought it might be a good idea to go back. And first off, uh, thank you for stopping by. Uh, if you like what you hear, I ask you to hit the like button. Uh, if you want, please subscribe and uh, share it. If you if you hear something that uh, brings some freedom, brings uh, some light, uh, please uh, feel free to share it. And uh, but I want to take a look at uh, the first. Um, I want to just do a recap on the first three seals. Uh, you might remember the first seal that was open was the white seal when the lamb opened the white seal. There was a rider and a white horse that uh, went across the landscape and they went out conquering and to conquer. And as we look at history, we find that that was known as the time of the five good emperors uh, in, the, in the Roman Empire. It lasted from 96 AD to 180. And if you start doing a uh, study on that, you will find that that's exactly what they call it, the five good emperors. During that time, the Roman Empire was at the height of its power. And uh, that when we covered it, we looked at the years uh, 196 through 180 A.D. The next seal that was open uh, was the, the second seal. The lamb opened the second seal, and we saw that a red horse and a red rider, or, or, a rider went out on a red horse, and uh, that kicked off the time known as the crisis of the third century. And it's very interesting how these three seals, the following three seals, all combined to make up that crisis of the third century and most historians believe that that lasted from 235 AD to 284 AD and uh, we covered when we talked about it we covered 185 through 284 AD and uh, we saw how the Severan dynasty uh, devalued the money prior to the crisis and so we kind of took a Took a little deeper dive into it, covering uh, about an extra 50 years. And I think I even called it during that lesson, the prelude to the crisis. That would have been lesson 21. And again, if you if you get online and start doing a search on this, you will find uh, that that's exactly what they called it, the crisis of the third century. And all this stuff lined up. When, when he opened up the first seal, there was a red horse that went out. And that red horse represents... Uh, civil war and uh, the, when uh, the, the uh, red horse went out with its rider it says that he was to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword and so did that happen yes absolutely that happened civil war broke out and again if you want to uh, do a little deeper dive on this you can go to lesson 21 then Jesus got to the third seal, and when he opened up the third seal, there was a black horse and a rider that went forth, and that represented economic depression. There was a breakdown, as we studied, there was a breakdown of the trade routes, which led to inflation and also led to high taxation. Now, we've not covered the fourth seal yet, but as we open up the fourth seal, what do we find but a green horse? And when it says a green horse, it's actually talking, it actually says a pale horse, but it means a green horse like a gangrene, like uh, a zombie. If you see a zombie in a movie, he's got that, that pale green color. That's what it's talking about, that pale green. And uh, as we open up the, the uh, fourth seal, we find that at the time in Rome, during the crisis of the third century, there was a great famine. We just talked last, last time about the breakdown of the trade routes and how because of that breakdown, there was a lot of barbarians coming in. There was a lot of civil unrest. And because of that, any anytime people were taking their stuff on the trade routes to get it spread throughout the Roman Empire, they would often get attacked. They would often get robbed. And so people quit growing so much, and they kind of stuck close to home. And they started doing uh, doing business there in the land that they lived in instead of trying to, to cover the empire. Well, so that led to a great famine. And... Uh, it also, right after that famine hit, I think the famine hit before the plague did, but there was a plague that took place. So, um, so we got the famine and we got the plague. The plague was called, is known as the plague of Cyprin. And the reason it's called that is because when the plague is actually a pandemic, 
started, St. Cyprian, the Bishop of Carthage, wrote the following. This is what he said about this. This was an eyewitness account of that plague. It says, Afterwards there broke out a dreadful plague, an excessive destruction of a hateful disease invaded every house in succession of the trembling populace, carrying off day by day with abrupt attack numberless people. Every one from his own house, all were shuddering, fleeing, shunning the contagion, impi impiously exposing their own friends, as if with the exclusion of the person who was sure to die of the plague, one can exclude death itself also. There lay about the meanwhile over the whole city, so there was people just laying everywhere dying, uh, no longer bodies, but the carcasses of many, and by the contemplation of a lot which in their turn would be theirs, demanded to pity the passerbys for themselves. No one regarded anything besides his cruel gains. No one trembled at the remembrance of a similar event. No one did to another what he himself wished to experience. So the people that saw uh, these people lying around had no pity on them. So now, that, that's what happened. The famine happened. The plague of Cyprus happened. So when we open up the sixth seal and we look at it, or the fifth, the fourth seal, and look at it, what do we see? Well, it says, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse again. It's talking about a green horse. And his name that set on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. Okay? In, in writing about the plague, the historian Isuvius wrote, Death waged a desolating war with two weapons. What two weapons did it use? Famine and pestilence. Men wasted away to mere skeletons, stumbled hither and thither like mere shadows, trembling and tottering. They fell down in the midst of the street, then, drawing their last gasp, cried out, Hunger! Some indeed were already the food of dogs. Now, one of the things you got to remember is this famine took place. I'm sure, and, and we, I don't know if we covered it last time, but a lot of the times, a lot of people that was living in the cities tried to move out to the country so that they could grow them something to eat. And so I believe with the famine and people laying around, starving, uh, the beast of the earth actually attacked people. You know, like I said there, it tells us about the dogs chewing people, people up and, and different things like that. Now, many believe that the plague began in Ethiopia around Easter in 250, and it reached Rome in 251. The plague lasted for 20 years and killed as many as 5,000 people per day in Rome alone. And, you know, we think we got problems with COVID, but it looks like here uh, there was up to 5,000 people a day dying just in Rome. That's not in the Roman Empire. That is in the city of Rome. Now, the symptoms of this plague included diarrhea, vomiting, throat ulcers, fever, and gangrenous hands and feet. That's interesting. Gangrenous hands and feet. And what did we say that this horse, the color of this horse was? It was pale green. So it was gangrenous. So uh, in uh, Robert Carangola, in his book, The Present Day Reign of Jesus Christ, puts this time of the fourth seal ending in 300 AD, as also does Charles Jennings in his book, the book of Revelation, end time prophecies from an Israelite and historicist interpretation. But now what I found, and I recommend both those books, uh, what I've learned, I use those books simply as a guideline. I, I looked at those books and seen what those guys were saying. And as I've told you in, in past teachings, I was raised as a futurist. I believed uh, in a future rapture. I believed in a future seven year tribulation period coming. I believed in the mark of the beast. I believed in all that coming and uh so when i when god led me to historicism i walked very slowly and so i, I got a hold of these books and i used these books as an outline and simply studied these books what, what, I, what i would read what they had to say i'd get online and i studied it and i'm absolutely convinced that historicism is absolutely correct now it appears that the plague ended in 270 a.d and the famine ended or shall we say, began to end with the ascension of Diocletian to the throne in 284 A.D. So that's why we're, we're, we're saying this time that you know, it probably ended in 284 A.D. Again, those two, uh, those two religious men, those two uh, teachers of the Word of God and teachers of the book of Revelation, they, they put it around 300. 
probably did take around 300 for things to get back to normal and everybody be fed and, and the absolute famine be totally done away with. But uh, most historians place it at uh, 284. So anyway, now uh, an interesting thing if uh, is how many people died during these years. Now at the height of the Roman Empire, and we talked about that in uh, Lesson 20, you, that was during the time of the five good emperors. The pop population of Rome of the Roman Empire was uh, estimated to have been about 70 million. Now, after the crisis of the third century, uh, everything that I could find said that it was probably estimated at around 55 million. So the reason I bring that up, it says there, and power was given unto them. If we look back in Revelation 6, 8, it says, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword. That's why I put these three together. You got the sword, you got hunger, you got death, and with the beasts of the earth. And so those three make up the crisis of the third century. So at the beginning of the fourth century, you got 55 million. That sounds like about a fourth. They was uh, they uh, they get, had power over the fourth part of the earth. And uh, we had some ladies come out one time to pray with us uh, during one of our prayer meetings. And uh, they came out, they came from uh, Canal County, and we was going to pray about Lincoln County. And so they said, you know, how do we how do we pray about Lincoln County? And I said, you know, um, the county, I don't care if it's a poor county, a rich county, I don't care what kind of county it is. The county is made up of people. It's made up of people and it's made up of families. And so when we when we pray for Lincoln County, it's the same as praying for Kanawha County. We're praying for families. We're praying uh, that domestic violence would end, that people would get saved, that families would love one another, that God would bind them together with love. If there's any abuse going on, that that would end, that, that alcoholism would come to an end, that drug abuse would come to an end, that pornography addiction would come to an end, all those things. And so, you know, when he says, well, it says here they was given uh, power over a fourth part of the earth. What are we talking about? A fourth part of the earth, if there's nobody there, it doesn't matter. We're talking about people. We're talking about people who lived and suffered and died during the crisis of the third century. So now, um, one of the, and also when we look at the city of Alexandria, just to give you an idea of how bad the famine was and how bad the plague was, as we look into the city of Alexandria, uh, I read some things that implies that uh, the population in Alexandria during this time had declined by 62%. And so people was dying. People was people was uh, starving to death. People was dying of the plague. It was a horrible time. Now, an interesting thing that took place at this time, uh, it appears that there was a surge in Christianity during the plague. It appears that Christians were told not to grieve the passing of their loved ones who had gone on to be in heaven. So we've got that blessed hope. We've got that hope that when we pass away, that we go on to be in heaven with the Lord. And so they were told, don't grieve your loved ones. They've gone on to a better place. Thank God they've escaped this horror. But love and care for those that were left behind and are still suffering. And so praise the Lord during this time, there was a surge in Christianity according to uh, according to history. So uh, next time we're going to take a look at uh, the day-to-year principle before we move on to the fifth seal. So I hope you, uh, hope you got something out of this. God bless you. Uh, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. I bless thee in Jesus' name. Have a great day.